Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. Hi, this is Season from Purdy Insurance. As we continue in the green phase per the governor's order, most of our staff continues to work from home to practice social distancing for the safety of our staff and clients. During this time, we are operating under the guidance of the insurance department. Our office remains available to service our current and new clients by phone by calling 570-286-5855, email, and by appointment. Our after-hours emergency service is also ready to assist our clients with their needs. From the team at Purdy Insurance, stay safe, be well, be kind, and know that we remain dedicated dedicated to the highest levels of service to protect what matters most. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Good afternoon, everybody. It is the Steve Jones Show as we start a new week on a Monday. News Radio 1070 WKOK. Matt Cattrillo here with you as well. And we are brought to you by our good friends at Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Get ready for the Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament coming up on Wednesday. Looking forward to that. And today's show also brought to you by our good friends at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Humble's Wharf, and a lot of different things to get into today, college-wise and the pros. Still waiting on the Big Ten football schedule. We'll see what happens there. We're actually going to have Brandon Gaunin from BTN on with us tomorrow at 4.06 to hopefully react to that. Hopefully it might be in the next uh, maybe a couple hours or maybe the next day or two, so we'll have Brandon on to talk about that. Hopefully once we see it in full, As far as what that could look like, lots of talk still on how things are going to look as far as schedules and all the Power 5 conferences. ACC's pretty much set. SEC is pretty much set as well. Pac-12, same thing. And uh, the Big 12, too. Just Big 10's last one to figure out what they're going to do as far as scheduling goes. But then, speaking of the Pac-12, they, of course, had the hashtag WeAreUnited story in the Players' Tribune just yesterday with a list of demands in order for them to not boycott this season. They're asking for Commissioner Larry Scott, administrators and coaches to drastically reduce salaries, distribute 50% of each sport's Pac-12 revenue among athletes in each sport, and prohibit COVID agreements waiving liability. Now, when I look at this, there are some I personally would agree with and some I would disagree with. Not sure exactly what Steve's take exactly will will be, and I'm sure we'll hear from that once he joins us soon from the Sunbury Motor Studio. As far as this goes, I, I think it's a little much to ask for 50% of the revenue because that's really never been done before. And it never probably never will be done. There's some things that they mentioned about getting the name, image, and likeness, which I think I thought they were already getting with the recent uh, rule that was just changed by the NCAA several months ago. And I have no problem with athletes getting paid as far as that goes. But in terms of getting paid to play the game that they got a scholarship for, they forget the first part of what they are, the student part. Students should not be getting paid to play the game itself. Again, if you want to get endorsements or whatever, that's fine. Because those are private organizations that want to honor you for your play and they want to use you as as a spokesman for whatever their ad campaign is. That's fine. But to play the game, I think it's 
a little much for players to actually be paid to play the game that they were given the scholarship for. Uh, that that's just me. I know there's I know there's probably a lot of people that don't think that way, but th that's just me. I just think you're there to be a student first and foremost for a majority of the athletes. Of course, there are some that we know pretty much from high school on that they're going to get a shot at playing in the pros and academics is, is secondary. I get that. That's fine. But they'll get their chance to get paid then when they eventually hopefully become a professional athlete. So I, I, I don't like seeing this wanting 50%. I, I, think, I think that's a little presumptuous of them to ask for something like that. And that, that's just me. Steve might feel differently. But to make sure, but I, I do think the ends, where, where they're right is they want to make sure that all protocols are in place to make sure that their safety is all ready to go. That I agree with because that should, they should, everyone should absolutely be on the same page as far as that goes. Because there's many other universities that are starting virtual or doing hybrid, whatever the combination of is that everybody else is doing to start the season. So I completely understand that. And that, that should be the case. And so far, so good in that respect. In the first 68 go. weeks or so, we, we've been go. good with that as far as the testing goes, Steve. And talking about uh, the, the Pac-12 player demands in this uh, hashtag We yeah, Are United well, article in the Players' Tribune. I think it's a dozen players from 10 schools. They've been able to then get the message out through Zoom to 400 others. So that's um, um, I want to start with this one. And this one bothers me a little bit. We want a third party on the medical side. Here's why I have a problem with that. You're telling me that the medical professional that the school employs isn't good enough? Well, you know, you're talking, these are all universities. Guess who the medical professional is associated with? A university medical center? Aren't university medical centers considered to be among the best? Am I wrong about that? Not at all. That let's let's take here. Obviously, not a Pac-12 school. Uh, I have entrusted the care of my children to Wayne Sebastianelli, like with total, complete, one hundred percent confidence. I think there are a lot of great doctors out there. Many, by the way, are Ari Geisinger. I have great trust in them, too. But you're telling me that Wayne wouldn't be good enough <laughs> to tell you something? Really? I'm obviously using a close-to-home example. We're not a Pac-12 school. But that's that's what gets me about this. And who's to say that the third person you picked is better than the than the one that's already at the university? You're telling me that that they that team doctors just throw you back on the field? Is that what you're telling me? Really? This is how it this is how it works. There are three different types of athletes. Right? Three when it comes to medical care. All right? One is if you tell me I'm ready, I'm ready. If you tell me I'm not ready, I'm not ready. That's one. No, it's hey, look, I try, you know, I'm hey, you think I'm ready to go? Okay. That's one. Two. The other two are difficult to control, by the way. One is, no matter what, I'm, I feel fine. I'm ready to go. And the, and the doctor has to tell you, no, you're not ready to go. Yeah, I am. I feel fine. I, I mean, I'm ready to go. No, you're not. And believe me, I've seen that repeatedly. Where even though the player is steadfast that they are ready, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't bother them, the medical professional has said, no, you're not ready to go. I have seen that a number of times. 
you admire the grit, the guts, determination, I'm going to get back out there. Okay? Then there's the third one. Yeah, we think you're ready to go. No, no, feel a twinge. And guess what? You don't go. How many? I mean, you've heard me talk about this before, Matt. So I'm not. I am not covering any ground that I haven't covered here before. All right? We've talked about. You know, people think coaches make decisions on uh, hurt players playing. They don't. There are only two individuals that make the decision on the hurt player playing. It's the doctor and it's the player. So that third-party thing bothers me. So it's got to be our, our person. What, your person is better? What if your person's worse? Just thought I'd throw it out there. Just because you're bringing him in. I mean, a lot of this, uh, look, when it comes to the safety protocols, you have to have great safety protocols. There's no getting around it. You have to. You absolutely have to. And I completely understand uh, the players being concerned about that because they want to be able to somehow do something that's not easy, and they want to have the confidence doing it. I am completely, I completely understand that. But, geez, don't put down the medical professionals that are already there like it's not good enough. It's a slap in the face to all the medical professionals that are working hard every single day and they make the hard decisions about you're not ready. Believe me, I've seen athletes. They're ready. It doesn't hurt. I feel fine. I feel fine. Because everybody's different in that regard. And the medical professional has told them, no, you're not. You, you need a couple more days. You need a couple more weeks. I've seen it. I've seen it. This idea, like, I work for the club. He's ready. No. As, as medical professionals who have their own reputations on the line, they want you out there when you're ready to be out there. Because the last thing they want is to have a reputation that you're doing a slipshod job. That seems to be forgotten sometimes when you hear some of this stuff. That, no, no, you're ready to go. You know, I'm going to put my own reputation on the line? Uh, no, if I don't think you're ready, you're not ready. Now, the other stuff is, is interesting that's in here. Um, can I get to a couple of other things before we get to this, though? We'll do the uh, kind of like news of the day here. 48 hours from now, we'll be at the uh, Susquehanna Valley Country Club. Okay. Matt's been warming up. Yes, I did. Um, so news of the day. Let's start with this. Basketball. Uh, Io DeSumo and Kofi Coburn of Illinois both returning to Illinois. Aaron Henry, Michigan State, going back to Michigan State, but... Xavier Tillman opts to stay in the draft. So Xavier Tillman out. Marcus Carr of Minnesota going back to Minnesota. Luca Garza going back to Iowa. Now it should be pointed out, and I said this when Garza, I said, look, I would I would do exactly what Garza's doing. I said I would advise him in a heartbeat to go through the process. Well, there really wasn't any process to go through, unfortunately, because of these circumstances. But Garza was on the big board ranked 74th. That's 14 spots out of being drafted. That's where he was ranked. He does some marvel. His footwork down low is marvelous. He's become a better shooter, but he's not quick. And he knows that. And to be honest with you, his father knows that too. Because his father's talked about it. So that's the news and notes there. Uh, Now let's get to uh, perceptions. Baseball is a mess. The NBA is great. Correct, Matt? And the NHL is great. Right? But yes. Okay? Yes. So that's the way it is. Bubble, great. Bubble, great. Not bubble, awful. All right? There's no doubt baseball with the Cardinals and the Marlins has had a problem to deal with. No doubt about it. 
But you do realize that the NBA is being claimed a success, and the numbers tell me this. So far, Major League Baseball has played 128 games. The NBA's played 19. I'd hold off on the on the accolades of success until you get to 128 games. I praise the NBA for what they're doing. I think it's great. I praise the NHL for what they're doing. There's no positive test in the NBA. There's no positive test in the NHL. So far, so good. Thank goodness. Major League Baseball is getting crushed, yet 28 of the teams have not had a problem, Matt. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. Okay, 28 teams have not had a problem. And the NHL is operating with 24. The NBA is operating with 24, 22. 22 for the NBA. 22. Okay? Baseball is operating with, with more teams, more players. Now, yeah, they're traveling around. No question. But so far, Major League Baseball has started and completed 128 games. The NBA has started and completed 19. Total praise to the NBA because I think they've done great work so far. But they haven't, I mean, they have played one-sixth the number, one-seventh the number of games that the that Major League Baseball has played with fewer players. Remember, the NBA is operating with 17 players. Major League Baseball is operating with 33 on each team. Last week, there were 29 positive tests in in Major League Baseball. 29. I texted Matt this on Friday. 29 positive tests in Major League Baseball. The release said 21 were from one team. They didn't identify the team. (laughs) The team that nobody cares about. Woohoo! But fortunately, the suit was at the press conference and raised his hand and said, I know his team. I know. Put your hand down. We got it. I'm just saying, look, if you're going to tell the story, tell the story. Okay? I don't need if it bleeds, it leads stuff. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. The Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament is Wednesday to benefit the Greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA. And the Y needs our help more than ever. So that's why we're all coming together to do this. You know, it. Of course, you notice that when it came to, um, you know, there's a, there's a breakfast and there's a lunch and a dinner and so forth. And this year, they're, you know, I think there's going to be a great food truck there, right? Yep. And you notice who uh, bowed out. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of us are out there for the cause. I, while I think the the extra stuff is nice... As you know, Matt, I've always been one like, hey, throw every dime you've got into the cause. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to throw every dime we have into the cause. We'll be there uh, Wednesday. I know we tee off at 10 o'clock. The show's at 3. We're going to do it out there on the patio, right? It's supposed to be a nice day. Yes, I'm very happy about that. It's supposed to be a very nice day. But it is all um, about the why. And Purdy Insurance is making this happen in the Truman H. Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament on Wednesday. Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. All right. Um, So let's get into the uh, Pac-12 conversation. Emily Givalda joins us from the Washington Post. Emily, welcome back. It's great to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's take a look at the Pac-12. Uh, there's a dozen players that are that have been spearheading this. 
Um, they've had Zoom calls with as many as 400 on there to talk about it. When you look at this, what were a couple of points that really stuck out to you about what they're doing? I think what's interesting is how it hits on so many different topic areas, but it sounds like it all started from this concern about their health and safety related to the coronavirus and, and what was going to come of playing the season amid a pandemic. So I think it's interesting that that was the starting point, but then once these players started talking with their teammates, they realized that as someone who's taking on that risk as an unpaid athlete and, and the people making the decisions are, you know, white men making millions of dollars usually, I, then they started to realize, hey, maybe there's a racial justice element to this. And then that tied in with the player compensation piece of it. And, and it created this complete set of basically ways that they wanted to improve college athlete rights. So I think that's what was most interesting to me was just how – how wide-ranging it was. Obviously, um, I would be surprised to see every one of those demands met as they ran it, but I think it's interesting that that's the approach they've taken to make this not just coronavirus, but expand it into all these other issues that are important to them and are more related than they first seem. Right. Uh, Obviously, the, the last time there was any kind of thought of unionization, for the lack of a better word, would be Northwestern in 2014 with Kane Coulter. And I know that only 20% voted for it. They actually voted. Uh, voted for it. Is it how, how serious is this considering it's a conference-wide attempt at a movement? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's really serious when you just think of the the numbers and, and the all the athletes you saw posting about it. But I think what's will be interesting is how many of them support this movement because my guess is pretty much all of them or most uh, you know would see these things running down and think hey yeah i want to be safe i'd like to make some money i'd like to you know in in racial injustice like i i think very few people wouldn't agree with those things but how many are actually willing to go as far as saying hey i'm not going to play this year right. because we haven't been guaranteed this so i think that's kind of the difference here and and we'll see and we'll see kind of how the pac-12 responds to this and if they start showing um significant progress but i do think that's the big unknown right now is how many people say hey i support this versus how many people are willing to you know give up a senior year or a season of eligibility or whatever it may be if they don't play. What is known about this, though, is somebody who is aiding the players in putting together this, and that's Ramoji Huma, who worked with the Northwestern players in 2014. Uh, He's involved again in this. Uh, Does that give pause to the leadership that somebody like that is Involved. I mean, leadership among like Larry Scott and so forth. That uh, this has been tried before, but it's six years later, and, th- and it's the same person involved. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think just in general, this would make every person in power a, a little nervous um, because the athletes are realizing how much power they have, and it's like it's been there all along. But I think in these last, I mean, really in the last few months and in the last couple of years, I'd say college athletes are are suddenly realizing, hey, like we're the ones who are playing every weekend. Um, You know, if if I, I had a player tell me the other day, like, if coaches show up for a workout and players aren't there, nothing's going to happen. Like, like there really is the sense that, hey, we drive everything, so w- why don't we use that leverage? So I think if you're, if you're one of these commissioners or coaches, ADs, anyone in this structure um, in a leadership position, I think you, you are going to be worried, yes, because someone who is helping has experience in fighting for these rights, right. but also just because the players themselves are – you know, it's kind of a new era of, of them realizing what what they maybe deserve isn't that far away and that they have the power to leverage. Uh, Ohio State was the, was the first one that we heard about, Emily, about liability waivers. You know, now, that doesn't mean everybody else didn't do it. I'm saying they're the first one that we heard about it. What did you think that mean? What do you think that meant to spurring some people on saying, hey, wait a minute? Liability waivers, what about us protecting us? 
Yeah, I think those were really interesting. And, and once they kind of came into the spotlight publicly, you had a lot of administrators kind of walking back. And, and I know Mark Emmert said he opposes them and, and they've taken the stance that they don't think that players should be signing these waivers. Um, and a lot of schools are trying to structure it or saying that it, all along it's it's like a pledge saying like, hey, I'm part of this team and, and by being part of this team, I understand that I'm going to wear a mask or do this or do that. Um, but I think it, it raised concerns because if you're a player or a parent especially um, and you're, you're seeing your kid signing this and it seems like the school's trying to deflect responsibility if that's how you're interpreting it i think that's really concerning because a lot of the common themes that we've seen in the last few days as players speak up more about their concerns is is who's looking out for them right so it's like i think they want to feel like someone is making decisions with their health and safety um prioritized and not as concerned about revenue um, compared to those things and, and I think there might be some worry of when you're signing a waiver like that or you interpret it that way it maybe signals like oh gosh wait or who, who's looking out for me here is this a signal that uh, they can do some lobbying on Capitol Hill for example and get Congress involved in this on players rights yeah that's that's an interesting piece of this um, because obviously lawmakers have been involved with a lot of this name image likeness stuff and i was watching the there's a senate hearing i guess a week or so ago where the ncaa was basically asking for um, antitrust immunity and, and some other things that they wanted help from congress on with name image likeness and when they were doing so senators kind of came back at them and said hey we want we want you guys to enforce these like basic athlete rights and a lot of things that came up were similar things to what's in um the pac-12 statement is is more more protections more safety more all this stuff so i think we are starting to see some lawmakers maybe get involved with with trying to push for these type same type things and you know what's interesting about that emily is this is that when you look at the senate side of it and Corey Booker, who played tight end at Stanford. Chris Murphy of Connecticut is, I mean, he loves sports. Uh, but then you have Marco Rubio of Florida and Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee. That's two Democrats, two Republicans. This is actually bipartisan in the Senate as to how they feel about this, because the four of them have been working on the legislation. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's because from a you know, even if these people these people do follow sports, or even in Cory Booker's case, played college football. Right. Um, so they're not on the outside, but but their life and their job is, is a bit on the outside. So I think no matter who you are, if you're looking at college football from the outside, I think it's pretty easy to say who's protecting these people. Let's prioritize their health. You know, like these are pretty basic type right sure. um, that, that you want to see. So I think that's probably why um, there's been some bipartisan support of of these type issues. And I think it just goes back to the fact that if you put this in a vacuum to someone who's never heard of college football, you'd probably be like, wait, what? Like, is this, is this how it works? Like, why, why aren't some of these things in place here? The money part's an interesting part. Uh, and... You know, name, image, and likeness. Uh, they, they, the NCAA claims they'll have something by October 31st that they can then examine and vote on by in January at some point. That's what they. That's, at least that's the goal. You cover Maryland. Maryland has fabulous women's basketball, women's lacrosse, field hockey. I, I mean, go on and on. Uh, those sports can't sustain themselves. As great as woman, as great a job as they're doing in women's basketball at Maryland, they lose a lot of money on it. Uh, so, how careful do the athletes have to be that they're not self, they're not destructing, uh, being a destruction to other athletes because of what their aims happen to be? Because there's got to be, you know, there, there's a balance. Yeah, I mean, I think there's no secret that football, men's basketball, the revenue those sports bring in effectively fund um, every other sports program at just about every major athletic department. Um, but I think what a lot of people call it a question is like, when you look at that revenue, that's one thing, but then you also look at the expenses. So it's like, okay, should we should we really be spending the amount they're spending on football, men's basketball? So I think I think that's the first thing is that Maybe maybe that's something to to look at. Like yes, they do bring in that money, but 
but also they're spending it and, and do they need to be doing it? And then the other piece of that is with name image likeness. I think, um, you know, that's separate a bit from the athletic departments and, right. and the broadcast revenue. A- so, a- agreed. Yep. So, so it's like, I think they see it as like, also like I did gymnastics um, and follow gymnastics very closely. Yeah. I think a lot of those athletes see it as something they could benefit from, you know, not to the tune of Justin Fields or, you know, whoever it may be, but I do think there is a space for them to um, benefit too. And I think some of them would really like to see that type of reform. I'll be honest with you. I, I read that report, Emily, from uh, Duke Pradden, a firm to take a look at what the potential earnings could be. And I think the, that firm was moving on to Kentucky next. They were talking about, like, the amount of money they could make off Instagram. All right. And now I admit the dinosaur is sitting here is like, going, what? <laughs> but evidently it's way more than I ever dreamed it would be. <laughs> right. And and it's like, in a sense, like you know, that's not taking any money away from what's already coming into the athletic yeah, department. Yeah, absolutely right. Right? It's yeah. just making new yeah. money. You yeah, know? Right. It's just you um, making your own money separate from everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not even like a zero sum thing of like if Trevor Lawrence makes this much on Instagram posts, Clemson doesn't make that and on their ticket sales or whatever it may be. Um, you know, so I, I don't think that's really a concern. And I think there are a lot of people who, you know, gymnasts or Olympians. I mean, think about Olympians, right? Like, yeah. like there are a lot of athletes, even just outside the major sports, who could make money on an Instagram post. Um, and it's kind of crazy that they can't, you know, because it's like the NCAA treat says, like, hey, you're a normal student. Um, and if a normal student could go out and post on Instagram to their 300 followers or whatever it may be, um, and I think that's the the stance a lot of athletes take. They say, "Hey, if we're a student in every other way, why can't we be right. in in this regard?" Well, I can tell you one person that can't make any money off of Instagram. That's probably me. All right, so <laughs> Emily, thanks so much. I really appreciate your time and perspective very much. Yep, thanks for having me. All right, a couple of interesting points about that. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment because they're talking about the money being allocated to other sports uh, as opposed to football and basketball. I'm going to talk about that in a moment on News Radio 1070 WKOK brought to you by Purdy Insurance. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Subway Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Merth family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle's worth. The SMC way is to offer you all assets applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC Way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC Way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC Way? The SMC Way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. Welcome. Great to have you with us. Brought to you by Purdy Insurance. Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Uh, we're talking about uh, the money end of it. And, of course, what makes intercollegiate athletics different than so many other endeavors, people would point out right away, well, the athletes aren't paid. And... Well, technically, they're not walking out with cash in hand. Okay. But the other part is football and men's basketball have to make the money in this socialistic system of sports so that you can have women's gymnastics, softball, women's soccer, Men's volleyball, baseball, men's soccer. I mean, you know, the long, the list goes on and on. I keep going and going and going. Okay. Um, if 
If you're running an athletic department like a business, I can tell you in no uncertain terms, the people, uh, the Hynoskis know this over at Wise Markets. Roger Haddon knows this here at this radio station. You invest money to make money. Doesn't mean you have to do it every single day, but you make certain investments with the idea you're going to get something back for it. Football and men's basketball are the only two sports that make money on the intercollegiate level. Every once in a while, you'll have a program like men's ice hockey at Penn State makes a, makes a profit. Good. You're self-sustaining. Good. Really good. Uh, women's basketball at UConn has its ups and downs financially, but I think the last report I saw, saw that they, they made some money. But that's it. That's all there is. So how do you increase the size of the slices of the pie for everybody? You've got to invest in the, in the slices that can bring the money in. It's football and men's basketball. So that's why when you hear, well, they shouldn't be putting so much money into this. Now, look, I can understand. Why should I be putting money into a facility and build a miniature golf course like Clemson did or a slide like Clemson did? Okay, now I'm sure the money was donated specifically for that, but that's part of the excess in the facility. Does that make you a better football player? No. So I understand the complaint about something like that, but not money that, that makes the program better. That's why you, you know, investing in football and men's basketball, the idea is to get a payoff so that you can make sure that you still have a strong men's and women's swimming program. To make sure that you still have a strong cross-country program, softball program. Penn State hired a new softball coach today, Clarissa Kroll. Was just hired from uh, Miami of Ohio. They got a beautiful facility to play in. Well, guess what? Softball student athletes work hard. They deserve a great place to play. They deserve a great place to play. So some of the stuff that they point out here in this Pac-12 piece, and see, you got to go a little bit deeper. You do know who the guiding light is here, right? The guiding light here is someone by the name of somebody you've never heard of. This will be somebody you've never heard of. All right? But I'm going to give you the name. Ramoji Huma. You're saying, Ramoji Huma? Who is Ramoji Huma? He is the heart and soul behind this. Let's turn the clock back six years ago on this show in 2014. Remember what we talked about that year? We spent the summer talking about whether or not Northwestern was going to vote to unionize. Ah. Well, guess who was the leader who was the advisor on that? Ramoji Huma. And by the way, it never came out what the vote was, but I can tell you what it was. Only 20% at Northwestern voted for unionization. There's a reality to this that is never talked about. If you privately talk to student athletes, like anybody else, do they want money? Of course they do. But most of them know that on the surface, and they'll tell you this feeling, right? They got a pretty good deal. Today's show brought to you by Purdy Insurance. Market Street and Sunbury, go to purdyinsurance.com.